We are harvesting potatoes. See these green potatoes? That's because that armadillo it dug them up and they've been exposed out here in the sun. Now these weren't, except for that one, but these all look pretty good. You don't wanna eat green potatoes. We're just trying to go ahead and get them up before we lose them all. See, these look good. Digging potatoes is fun. It's like finding little treasures. <laughs> you love doing this, don't you, Jean? <clears throat> that's what the armadillo's after. <laughs> There's a ton of grubs out here and that's what the armadillos are rooting after. We need to let the chickens loose out here. Here's our little armadillo trap. That's not working. We read that there's really no bait to bait armadillos. Mm. Mm. So, we just, Jean just kind of set it up like that, but it hasn't worked. There's no armadillo in that trap. Potato. Goodness gracious. Look at that potato. We're picking up all the vegetation now and gonna put it in the compost. I don't wanna give it to the chickens. Usually I pull things up and go give to the chickens, but I know potato vegetation and tomato vegetation are all toxic. And I don't know for sure, but I don't think you should give that to your chickens. They probably just wouldn't eat it, but anyway, we're putting it in the compost bin. You don't feed it to me. <laughs> All right, here's our harvest. The, this little row of potatoes here was kind of premature, but I went ahead and took them anyway because they were starting to get some little bug holes in them. Just a few, not many, but I wanna get them before the bugs get them. These are like new potatoes. They're really good in like beans and stuff like that. So we went ahead and harvested all of them. So this is what we got this year. These are the white potatoes and a lot of them are green because this is where that armadillo was doing a lot of the damage and exposing the potatoes to the sun. But there's a lot of them in here that's good too. So I'm glad we went ahead and got them. So I did a couple of experiments this year. First of all, uh, in the cut and cure process, some of them I cut them and left eyes on them and just made cuts out of one seed potato and let them cure. And then some of them, I just uh, put them in here whole just to see like what the difference actually would be. And really, there's not a whole, whole lot of difference but I do think that the ones that we cut actually made more potatoes. But the ones that we left whole maybe made bigger potatoes. 
You think? Yeah. That's what it appears to be. That's all our red ones. So that was my experiment with the cut and cure thing. So my other experiment was with the companion planting. So potatoes, cabbages, and kale are supposed to be good companions with each other. So that's what I did. I just harvested my cabbages. I only had like four little baby ones, but those cabbage moths, I wanted to go ahead and take what I had before they ruined those. I did love having the um, potatoes with the kale this year. I really liked that a lot until the past few weeks because I had to water the kale every day because it's been so hot and they were wilty. But I really shouldn't have been watering the potatoes because um, they needed to be curing because I was about to be harvesting them. The good thing is, is I have my potatoes planted like on a hill here. I made like a hill and I had all my potatoes planted in the hill. And then I had my cabbages planted like in the dips, in like the trenches of the berms. So that, that was a good thing because then I was able to just come down and water these trenches of kale and not get water on my potatoes that I was trying to let cure so that I could harvest them. So, I, I mean, actually it worked out pretty good because of the way that I had planted it um, by putting the kale in those little trenches. So I am thankful that I did that. Um, that was kind of by accident, but I'm glad it worked out that way. I like having the kale and the cabbage with the potatoes. I liked it a lot. It gave us a lot of room and it worked out really, really good. I just have to remember to plant the kale in like a trench there so that we can water it. So in planting the potatoes, we, um, we covered them with soil really good when we planted them. And then as the vegetation grew, we covered it with soil a little bit. And then we just started covering it with the hay and, and just mounding up the hay on top of the foliage. We tried to do a good job of that, but we didn't do a great job of that. But I think really we needed to keep covering them, covering the foliage with soil because the potatoes didn't really go deep. They were just kind of right on the surface of these berms. And I think that um, they really didn't go deep and spread as far. So that's just a note to ourselves that next year we need to have a pile of soil so somewhere close by and as the vegetation comes up and grows we just need to keep piling soil on top of that and I was trying to do like the Ruth Stout method where you just um, plant the potatoes in hay and then you just keep piling the hay on top of it and I mean you know we got a pretty good crop of potatoes I think I mean we got a pretty good bit of potatoes here I just think we could have done better so I'm always trying to improve and get better and better and better at this. This is our third or fourth time to ever grow potatoes. So each year I'm trying to learn a little more and a little more and get better and better at it. So if any of you guys have any like great advice to give on planting potatoes, please share with me and with everybody else. And, um, if anybody's got any great ideas of how to get rid of armadillos, that would be wonderful too. Because our little trap over there has not worked. There's our potato harvest. I think we ended up with a lot of potatoes. A lot more than last year. Look y'all, it's raining. Thank you Lord, it's raining. We have been about three weeks without rain. And it is raining on my garden. I'm so happy. I could just stand out here in it all night. The sweet sound of rain from heaven. Thank you, Lord. 
Now I'm just gonna go through them and set them out on the counter here on some newspaper and let them air dry. Just let them toughen up a little bit so that they can store better. So when you harvest your potatoes, you don't wash them because you don't wanna wash off the soil. The soil is kind of keeping them um, protected and like that one's peeled. So I'm gonna put it in a separate pile and we're gonna eat these first. But um, <clears throat> you want to sit them out and let them air dry. And that just kind of hardens them off and makes them store better. So I'm gonna put them out on my counter here because this is the only space I have to do it. And let them air dry for a few days probably till next week. And then I think what I'm gonna do is uh, get some crates and put them in crates with um, sawdust or something and see if that'll help them store easier. Potatoes really store better in um, a temperature of like 50 degrees uh, if they don't sprout as quickly and they just store better. So that's why having like a root cellar or you know, a cool dark spot is the best, best place to store them. It is in our plans to build a root cellar, but we haven't got there yet. So I am going to store these the best way that I can. And I think the answer will be little storage containers with sawdust or something in there and maybe some diatomaceous earth just to help keep little bugs out of it. So that's how I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna try to find the coolest, darkest spot I can in our house and store them that way. I think on my last video, some of my terminology might have been a little bit confusing. When you're first getting ready to plant your potatoes and you buy your seed potatoes or whatever, you um, the first process is the chitting process. And that's where you let it sit and you let the little sprouts come out on the potato. The next thing you do is cut and cure, and that's where you cut the potato in sections, make, making sure there's a little sprout eye on each section. You're cutting the potato in sections, and then you let it sit out for a couple of days and let them cure, letting them harden off. It just kind of puts a protective covering around the potato where you cut it so that um, it's less susceptible to bacteria and bugs and fungus and stuff. Um, this year, I did that experiment where I planted some uh, with cutting them, and then some, I just put the whole potato in the ground. It had eyes sprouted on it, but I just put the whole potato in the ground. And I think both ways works really well. I think both ways works good. So that's the chitting, the cut, and cure process of growing your potatoes. And then when you're ready to harvest the potatoes, you know that they're ready to harvest when all of the vegetation has died back. And what I've read and researched is, is when you see all that foliage die back, it's really good to leave them in the ground after that for about a week or so, and just let that skin firm up on the potato in the ground. And then when you harvest them, you should let them like air dry, just spread them out and let them air dry. And that helps them to harden off and be able to store better. So that's what I've read and researched on growing and harvesting potatoes, and um, that's been working pretty good for us. I made a video last year on the whole process, so if you want to go back and check out that video, that might help you guys. Right now, I'm just going to get all these potatoes laid out and let them like air dry and harden off. I'm going to come back and cover them all with a towel because the sun comes in here and you really don't want sun getting to them. And I'm pretty happy with our potato harvest. I'm glad we went ahead and got it before armadillos, varmints, bugs, creatures, anybody else got them. For those of you that don't know, we are in Central Alabama Zone 8 and I planted these potatoes on February the 27th and we harvested them Sunday, which was May 17th. So that's right around 90 days. 
It usually um, takes the potatoes around 80 to 115 days to grow. So um, that was right around 90 days. Okay, here's what we ended up with. All of these right here are the little potatoes. So they're like little new potatoes. So I'll store them separately and use them in beans and stuff like that. These all looked really good. So I'm just leaving these here to harden off. And these will be the ones that we store. They'll store better. And these are the ones that were kind of messed up. They were either scarred or had little bug holes in them or the skin was like peeled off. And so we will eat these first. And then these all looked really good. So I'm just letting these sit here to harden off for a few days and these will store good. Honestly, I don't know if all this effort is really necessary. I mean, if you had like a whole, whole bunch of potatoes, I don't know how you would do this. So I don't know if this is really necessary, but this is what I'm doing. Here's some eggs that we got this morning. I'm pretty excited about our potato harvest. I'm anxious to see like how long this will actually last us. So I've logged how much I planted and I'm gonna see how long these potatoes will last us. And then I'll know how many more I need to plant next year. But I'm really excited about being able to grow our own root crops like potatoes, carrots, rutabagas, turnips, things like that because really the root crops that you buy or that you eat, those crops are full of most of the toxins because they're in the soil and they absorb up anything that's put into the soil by the farmer or the grower like Roundup or um, herbicides or anything like that, anything that's in that soil your root crops are down in the soil, so they're absorbing all of those toxins that's in that soil. Organic food is really expensive, and if you can't afford to buy everything organic, I would, at the minimum, buy my root crops organic as much as you possibly can because those are gonna have the most toxins. And things like strawberries and peaches, those things are heavily sprayed too in, in Alabama anyway because um, there's so many uh, insects and pests and uh, disease pressure. So they're heavily sprayed. So things like that, those are the things that you want to try to buy organic. You know, I, we personally can't buy everything organic. It's so expensive. And that's why we're trying to grow a lot of our food so I'm really excited to be able to grow some of these root crops for us but the taste the taste of a potato a sweet potato a carrot that comes right out of the ground is totally different than the taste of one bought in a grocery store it's totally different so um, I'm really excited about being able to grow these things and here is our first harvest of honey this year. We've got 20 gallons. But you can see, like when I take these lids off, how it's got all this little air bubbles and stuff. All the air has rose to the top. So I'm gonna be skimming that off. And I'll save that just for us. We'll, we'll still eat it. I mean, it's still awesome. By removing all of this air from in there, that helps it to not crystallize as well. So we're going to be skimming this off and jarring this honey up soon. I've got to order some more jars and some more labels. We finally got some rain last night. Thank the Lord. I'm so happy about that. So today I'm gonna get out here and fertilize some things. I haven't been able to fertilize because it's been so dry, I was afraid it was gonna burn things up. So I'm gonna get out here and fertilize my roses and my gardenia and put some more iron on my gardenia and fertilize the vegetables. Um, Jean actually ran down in the rain last night and fertilized the watermelon and the corn. But I'm gonna get out here and fertilize. I'm gonna finish harvesting some things like my broccoli. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest all that and put that in the freezer. And um, what else? 
I'm gonna harvest some radishes. I'm trying to get a few more carrots, I hope. I'm gonna get all this spinach and go ahead and wash it and put it up in the freezer and some kale. So I wanna get a lot of the cool season things harvested. What are you barking at, buddy? I wanna get a lot of the uh, cool season vegetables harvested and put up. And then I'm going to re-sow some seed today. I'm gonna re-sow okra seed and beans. And I've got a few squash hills that didn't make it. So I'm gonna re-sow those seeds. Because in the forecast, it looks like we're going to get some more rain over the next few days. So I'm gonna go ahead and fertilize and sow some more seeds and hope and pray that we do actually get some more rain. I've been working on cleaning the wax from the honey harvest. And the way I do it is I've got these two five gallon buckets and this one, here's the wax. So I'm using a five gallon bucket paint strainer and we put all the wax in that. And then this bucket has holes in it. So I put it in here like this, put this over so it doesn't fold up in there. And then I put this bucket inside this bucket and fill it up with water and let it just sit and soak overnight. And then I drain it off. I do that for like, I don't know, four or five times until I feel like the, the water's pretty clean. I'm just trying to get all the honey and stuff off of the wax. So I've been doing that process and now, last night I come out and drained all the water off of it and let it just sit out here and drain. So this big bag of wax is ready to be used. When the wax is really clean, it's almost like little potato flakes. And you really do not want to get this in your sink or in your um, plumbing pipes. That could cause a disaster. Three gallon sized full bags of beeswax.
dog do you? I think I'm gonna make us some tail chips. I think that's a great idea. You are awesome, Tracy. And you have a beautiful backside. I stripped my kale. I picked a lot of it. There's a lot left and I'll probably get at least another harvest out of it. I'm, I may get two more harvests out of it. Won't be as big as what I just picked because it's starting to get so hot. But I got a big basket of kale here. I'm gonna go inside and wash it and let it dry and put it in freezer bags for us to use. We eat kale with everything. Um, but I'm also going to make some kale chips. We love kale chips. So I'm going to make some of those too. The jars all washed for that wonderful honeybee, honey, at Just Dig It Farms. Can't beat it. Had some on my biscuits this morning. Mm. Mom is getting the um, pot jars disinfected. She's used some thieves and some soap. She's, uh, Rinsing them out in hot water and, and rubbing them down and cleaning them up. We have to put her to work because that's the way she gets her honey. I let her have some if she does some manual labor. Yep, and I get to camp. <laughs> we got our potatoes harvested. Um, they're in there curing. We've been eating a, a couple. Um, we're just enjoying this weather right now. We got all the the potatoes, as you can see, harvested. We got sweet potatoes starting to come up. And it's evening. Feels great outside. It's Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Actually, it's tomorrow. <laughs> but it's Memorial Day weekend. And uh, we just want to show you our sunflowers. They're not the hoss seeds, but check it out. I hear thunder. But we got some good, I think we got some rain coming. I hear thunder coming. It's building all back in here, which will be great because we need the rain. And y'all keep praying that um, we can get a great mighty hunter to come get whatever's destroying our garden and orchard. I think it's armadillo. We've got a trap set over there, but hadn't had any luck yet. So anyway, thanks for hanging out with us this weekend. We love you guys. God bless you and have a great Memorial Day tomorrow.